Tracing Your Family Roots. I'm Chuck Mason. My co-host today is Janelle Blue. Janelle is the president of our sponsoring organization, the Mount Vernon Genealogical Society. And our guest today is Carol Petranik. Carol's a return guest. She's one of the assistant directors of the Washington, D.C. Family History Center out in Kensington, Maryland. And Carol has done some interesting work. She has spent three summers in Greece digitizing and preserving church records for the archdiocese and the villages, uh, village churches in Greece. So we want to talk to her about this. And the first question is, why are you doing this, Carol? <laughs> Hi, welcome. I'm really happy to be here with both of you. Thank you so much for inviting me to come and talk about this very important topic to me. I am doing this out of love. I'm doing this because my family is from Sparta. Four of, all four of my grandparents come from, three of them come from one village and the other comes from an adjacent village. And as far as I've been able to track back to my great grandparents, they're all from villages immediately surrounding Sparta. So this is who I am. Um, my desire was to learn about my family and my family research and as I began that uh, wonderful trek over to Sparta and to the libraries and, and to the archives, um, I saw the status of the records there. Um, and this slide that we're going to show um, in just a moment um, is getting started back in 2014. I went on my first real research trip. When I say real research trip, I think you all know that sometimes you go overseas and you're touring a little bit and you're having a good time. Um, with my colleague Gregory, and Gregory Contos is, is in this uh, slide with me. I'm in one, he's in the other. And uh, these pictures show us at the metropolis of Sparta where Gregory is helping me try to find records of my great-grandparents' marriages. Carol, wh wh what were the original immigrants? Was it your great-grandparents? It was my grandparents. Your grandparents, My okay. father's parents and my mother's parents were both uh, the immigrants, and they came over during that great wave of migration mm -hmm. when the Southern Europeans came uh, at the beginning of the, um, uh, well, my, one of my grandfathers came 1899 and the others came within 10 years. Okay, good. So they were part of that great wave of, um, of immigration. Uh, for many years, my research was basically just U.S. research, uh, talking to family members here, learning about my parents' cousins, learning about my grandparents' lives, because there was no, um, there were no records, and there still are no records online for Greece. So uh, while my children were young, I spent my time um, working on the records in the United States. And uh, it wasn't until 2014 that I made a real research trip, even though I had been there several years before. Mm -hmm. So um, the next slide shows my colleague Gregory Contos and Father Seraphim. Father Seraphim is the one that we can thank for really initiating this project. As Gregory and I were looking at the records in the Sparta Metropolis, which is like an archdiocese in the Greek Orthodox Church, and we saw the condition of the records, we were like, I was just stunned. I'm like, oh my gosh, these records are falling apart. And the priests are wonderful. They bring them out, put them on the table, you can flip through them, you can do whatever you want, and mm. they're crumbling in my hands. Oh my gosh. I, I had that experience with newspapers in, in a facility where they didn't have them on microfilm. They uh -huh. had the newspapers, they were flattened out and had been bound into big books, but literally, as I'm turning uh -huh. the newspapers, the edges are all falling apart. Oh, and I, yes, you know, yes. The same thing you're experiencing, and my thought was, I hope somebody has filmed these somewhere. Well, <laughs> in Greece, nobody has filmed. Um, the General State Archives of Greece has a website, and they have digitized some records. But that's, uh, th those are civil records. Nothing has been done with the church records. church records. And we all know as genealogists that the church records is where the heart of the family is, mm -hmm. the births, the marriages, the deaths. So um, as Gregory and I were talking with Father Seraphim, I said to him, have, has anybody ever thought about digitizing or preserving these records? And he said, we thought we had a contract with the European Union, but it fell through. 
And he said, why don't you make us a proposal and we'll send it to the bishop. So we walked out of there and I said to Gregory, we're going to get those records. And Gregory's <laughs> like, he's so adorable. My little adopted grandson, he's like, I don't know how that's going to happen. I said, Greg, I'm a genealogist. I know people. We're going to get those records. <laughs> and sure enough, I came home and, and went to work making um, some calls and some contacts. And it turned out that we were able to uh, make an arrangement with the Bishop of Sparta and MyHeritage.com okay. to digitize the records. Mm. So I went back and um, in 2017, and uh, that was my first that was my first project. So take a look at this next slide. This is an example of what a marriage book back in the early 1800s looks like. And you can see, even though it's an index book, you can see that the information as genealogists that we need to get us started is there. The bride's information, the groom's information, etc. And uh, this is a perfect example of what a book looks like. The handwriting's of course old Greek, it's falling apart. Um, but I did do this digitization project with Gregory. We digitized um, 26 books between the years of 1835 and 1935. We stopped the contract at 1935 because of privacy mm. concerns. Those people are, may still be living. And it took us about two weeks, a little over two weeks, to do those books. So that whetted my appetite. Yes. <laughs> and while we're working in the metropolis, um, one of the clerks uh, took us downstairs and lo and behold, the next slide will show you what I saw. Gregory and I saw boxes and boxes of records. These are the documents that support the marriage. In Greece, if you want to get married, your priest has to write a letter to the archbishop, to the bishop, excuse me, asking permission for these couple to get married. And if the, uh, the bride and the grooms are from the same village, one priest can write that letter. And then the, the bishop gives permission and, and the, the marriage can go on or it can't happen. Uh, if the, either party is from a different village, then you've got the documentation from that village. The man has to prove that he's registered um, in the registry of that village. Sometimes there are dowry contracts that are found in these documents, which are priceless documents. Um, sometimes there are, there's contention, and perhaps there are people in the family who don't want that marriage to take place. So these documents that support the marriage are filled with rich genealogical and family information. So when you say they have to be registered, what does that mean? That means that every male and now every female in every village is actually written down in a civil register. Okay. That they were born on, in this, in the early days, it was just they were born in this year, this is their father, this is the year they were born, and this is the number in the registry that they are. So similar to <laughs> our birth registers or certificates that we now have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and of course, all those boxes you showed us, they, they were all acid-proof. Oh, absolutely. You know, great things for preserving. Absolutely. <laughs> In fact, the next slide will show you when we opened up those boxes, what exactly they looked like. Right. They were just oh wrapped in paper. Uh, in string, but this was a very, and, and tied together with string, but this was a very well organized archive. Some of them were in those old folders and some of them were just in boxes. So um, mm. I, the next slide will show you what these documents actually look like and how precious they are. Um, this slide shows you the documents of a male and on, on the right and a female on the left that actually have photos in them. These are from the early 1900s. So um, many of the older ones, of course, don't have pictures because there were no cameras in Greece in the 1800s. And uh, you see the stamps. Anyway, they're, they're just amazing documents. So when I saw these, I said to Greg, we have to go back and get the marriage documents. Mm -hmm. And Greg's like, well, I don't know if they're going to give permission for this. And I said, we'll get them. <laughs> we did. The next summer we went back, we signed another contract with the bishop, and I spent two full months digitizing over 200,000 records. Oh my gosh. Page by page, I had a, a man working with me, and just every day what we did was just stack of documents, had your camera, click and go, click and go. Mm. It was really, um, it was really quite an amazing, amazing process. Now, quick question. Mm -hmm. When you say camera, were you able to actually do them in color? 
Yes. So all those, oh. Yes. So all those fantastic stamps and all of that. Everything is in will color. Will show up in color. Absolutely. It's so much better than microfilm. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's so true. Although we're grateful to have those microfilm records. That's true. Um, so it's interesting in Greece, um, the digitization and the preserving of records is happening, but very slowly. Um, the next slide will show you some of the state um, archives offices are in fact starting digitization projects. This is the archive in Kalamata, Messenia, um, on the southwest area of the Peloponnese. And you can see the scanner, you can see the woman um, doing, uh, uh, pre, you know, entering information. You can see the big book. So some of the archives have begun to do some digitization work. But as far as the churches are concerned, the next slide will show you why um, these churches are adorable, these cute little <laughs> yes. mountain village churches. But it's just a priest. There's yeah. no secretary like we see in our churches here. There's no office. It's and, just the priest. And probably just barely enough money to pay a salary to support him, let alone Absolutely. Outside so there's no government initiative to do this sort of on a countrywide basis. There. Well, there is. Um, the General State Archives of Greece does have a website, and they have begun digitizing records, some of these older records. Uh, the problem with that website is, first of all, um, like many government websites, it's difficult to navigate. Secondly of all, you have to know the language to mm. be able to read where, where, how you're navigating and where you're going. Mm -hmm. And the third problem is that the website is frequently down. <laughs> Are they surname searchable? No. Okay. Nothing is name indexed. Okay. They're just collections of records online. So when the website's working, you try to go in and determine what collection of records are even there of interest to you. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of work your way through. You start drilling down to see whether your village is listed because everything's done by geographic locality. You start with a larger province and then you go down to the villages. And then you just start bringing up your images and try to read the old handwriting mm. to we're, we're, determine. We're kind of spoiled here. We have indexes and, and things, and so people mm -hmm. may think, well, gee, you know, but the fact that these are at least being preserved yes. Yes. is the big step. Right. Absolutely. Because if they deteriorate, then there is going to be it's gone. nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, you know, that's the thing that we have had record losses, Absolutely. losses here. So. Absolutely. And of course, in Greece, um, as we all know, the country's been in a terrible economic crisis uh, for over 10 years now. And so the money for digitization and preservation is basically Not very, there, very, yeah. very, very little. So consequently, um, out of my own interest, um, I go as a volunteer to do this work. I, I don't get paid for it. And I have, uh, uh, when I was there in 2017 and 2018, I decided that it really needed to get these village books. Um, the slide that showed the village churches sh just shows what it is like there in the villages. And there must be many, many churches. Some villages, even small ones, may have eight churches. Oh my gosh. My little village has eight churches. Wow. So not all of them have records because they are, well, there's one priest that serves those, those churches and he usually takes them with him in his home. And that's the problem. Oh, yeah. they no, disappear. Really? Yeah. Like, like the circuit oh. riders that yes. you had oh. in the Methodist church and other yes. churches years they ago. Kept, where, they kept those records. Yeah. So um, the next slide will show you uh, just a, an example of what I did in 2019 last summer. I digitized in 154 villages. Um, it took me, uh, oh, about a month, a little bit over a month. And um, I took over 21,000 images of birth, marriage, and death books in these oh villages. Mm. And this picture shows you what I, a completed, um, a, book looks like. There's um, a, an index card with the name of the village. 
uh, the book is tied in string because that's how I received it. And you see that little flash drive? Mm -hmm. Every priest went home with a flash that's drive ah. with his books digitized in his village. How smart and is that? the metropolis now has the digital images for all of those 154 villages that they have ge geographical jurisdiction over. Prior to this project, there was no backup system Which at all. probably could be or was a selling point yes. to these churches mm -hmm. because, you know, I know Historical Society in New Jersey has done this and they, they convinced this one Methodist church to allow them to, to scan the books. Yes in the summer and Christmas Eve that year, the church burnt to the ground oh. over a hundred year old <gasps> church. They lost all the records, oh. but they had them on, on a, they were putting them on a CD, the yeah. Historical Society. So they had, so their only loss was from like July or August to December. So very oh, easy so to sad. recreate those records. But, so sad. but so, that's a great selling point. Yeah. So where would a researcher find these digitized records now? Yes. Well, um, the, they are now going to be online at myheritage.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see if we can slip, slip ahead a couple of slides. I'll show you. Oh, wait, let me just show you very quickly. This is one of the village books that we have uh, that we oh were dealing gosh. with. This is my cousin Panarea Kostaku. And I brought this book to Panare and said, you have to help me because I need to digitize. It was back to the early, um, eight, late 1800s. And as you can see, it's an extensive book with thousands of names. Oh, so she goodness. helps me sort it and put it together. And the next slide um, will show you the, whoops, go back, will show you the tech. You had asked a little bit earlier, no, uh, the tech slide, the next one shows you the camera equipment that we have, um, courtesy of MyHeritage. Uh, they provided uh, an icon camera, the LED lights, and then we have, you can see there's black cloth to put the books on. Um, of course, there's utensils to hold the pages. There's a piece of plexiglass that we need to keep the book flat. And there I am working away uh, on the village books at the metropolis. So um, that, was my, that was my home away from home for the last three summers. Um, as far as where are these going to be online, mm -hmm. um, the next slide will show you that MyHeritage, um, thanks to their sponsorship, uh, will have the Sparta records that I have done. But my colleague Gregory has now started a website called GreekAncestry.net. What we're finding is that areas such as Greece, Balkan areas, um, are really underserved by the large genealogy websites. Mm -hmm. My heritage, thank goodness, um, stepped up and you know uh, allowed for digitization of some records. But we don't know how many they're going to want, and we don't know uh, the extent of uh, support that we'll get in the future. So my colleague Gregory has decided to start his own business now. And uh, he's starting a website that will be live in the next week. And uh, as we go out and we find collections, we'll be putting them up on GreekAncestry.net. Oh, it will, great. every record that is on that website will be name indexed. So as we find these old collections and as they're name indexed, people will, for the first time, be able to go to a website of Greek records, type in a name and see what comes up. Wow. So it's a, it's a huge, huge initiative, but it's very much, um, there's a real demand in the, in the Greek uh, diaspora for these records. We have a Facebook page now, Hellenic Genealogy Geek, G-E-E-K, kind of like computer geek. Mm -hmm. We have 24,000 people on this Facebook page. Oh my goodness. And all we keep hearing over and over again is, why are there no records? How come I can't find records? Records are in every country. Why are they not for my ancestors? Yeah. So we're trying to fill that gap. So how can other people become involved in this? I'm sure <sighs> there's a need for volunteers. There <laughs> is, but not just in Greece. I would say that there's a wonderful opportunity for anybody in any area of genealogical research that they are specifically interested in. A personal, it has to be a personal interest. You have to have a, a strong desire to be able to give up your time 
and to take the hours and the money necessary to volunteer. Mm -hmm. I think what you mentioned earlier about the society that uh, cho asked the Methodist Church if they could mm -hmm. um, do their records, pre preserve their records, I think there are opportunities for many of us to do this in the areas of interest for us. Um, if you come from a foreign country, you have ancestors from a foreign country that is underserved by the major genealogy websites, meaning that these are small collections, they're difficult to get to. Um, you're not, they're not going to have thousands of people pay to subscribe to their website because there they're are just not that many records to draw uh -huh. them in. Uh -huh. But my, this whole project started out of a desire to preserve what was my ancestral um, home's records. And there are thousands of people, in the, millions of people in this country, whose roots come from somewhere else. Right. And perhaps there's something that they can do. Perhaps they can volunteer to go to a, a church, either here in America or in their country overseas, and digitize those records. It's not a hard process. It just takes time. You need to have some equipment, but it's not expensive equipment. Perhaps there could be a sponsor for them, uh, a genealogy society. There are a lot of um, ethnic societies in the United States. I know there certainly is a large Czech community mm -hmm. um, in the Midwest, my husband's of Czech descent. Mm -hmm. And there are organizations in this country that I'm sure would partner with someone who came up with the idea to preserve the records here. As far as overseas is concerned, um, like I said, if you come from a smaller country, I'm sure that just as in Greece, there are there's a a lot of digitization is just not has not happened, and it's not taking place. And it's just a question of somebody just coming in and say, "I can do this. I can make this happen. If I can make this happen, can we work together? Can we make a contract? Can is there a way that you would allow?" your records to be preserved. So how long from the time then you said, mm -hmm. I know people, I can make this happen, yeah. um, to making it happen, mm -hmm. what, how long did that take? Was it was it? about, well, um, it's, I did have to make some contacts and we did have to do some negotiations, but um, it depends on which company you're trying to, to get uh, to cooperate with you. I went to a couple of different organizations, large genealogy companies. Um, when we approached my, when I approached my heritage, um, it was within a month. I had wow. an approval from Galaj Jafath, who's the CEO of my uh -huh. heritage. So it just depends on some of these large genealogy companies. What goals do they have? What interests do they have in the area that you're in? And sometimes it takes a little time to work it through, but if you can get to one that is interested in that particular region of the world, it can happen pretty and quickly. I'm sure timing sometimes, <clears throat> you know, they, they may be overwhelmed with projects, mm -hmm. yeah. but down the road, they may have plenty of time and-, and That's true. And the other thing available. too is that they're looking for large, most of these companies are looking for large collections. I mean, to me, 300,000 records from Greece is, oh my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> but when you're looking at collections that are 35 million records from so. Finland, you know, or 100 million records from Germany. Right. What's 200,000 records? Right. So, uh, so, yeah. so it's probably, I guess it's your recommendation to try to work with some of these from my heritage type companies rather mm -hmm. than to, like if my society wanted to take on a project, it's probably better to collab collaborate with somebody, a larger company, than to try to buy the equipment and do it on our own, right? Well, it, it, depends. Um, with my heritage, we were very fortunate that they were interested in these Sparta records. But I, like I said, their, their focus is large collections. Mm -hmm. So now that they have these records, they will be going online. Um, but how many more and how much more time would their technicians want to spend on small collections? This is why Gregory's starting his site. Uh -huh. And this is why we are just going to go ahead and plow through with um, uh, digitization when I go back this summer. Um, there will be uh, some other additional churches that I'll be working in, and we'll see if they go up on my heritage or if they go on GreekAncestry.net. The fact is that we're there. 
yeah. we're in. You're we're in. in. The door we, has yes. opened, and yes. we're going to take advantage of it. So after Sparta, are you going to expand We're going to Arcadia. Yes, I'm going to Arcadia next, which is that. See, we're starting in the Peloponnese because that is the, was the area where the majority of men immigrated. Three quarters of the men between the ages of 18 and 40 left the Peloponnese between 1900 and 1930. Three quarters of the men left. And that was because? Because of economic conditions. Oh my goodness. Economic conditions. There was, poverty was um, rampant. And so we're, we're starting with the area with the largest migration. Uh -huh. you know, one that of the things sense. that I want to point out before we are out of time mm -hmm. is I often have people come and say, like <coughs> the Family History Center in Salt Lake has records, but why don't they have everything? As an example, when they filmed New Jersey Vital Records, New Jersey only, they begin in 1848, and they only allowed them 1848 to 1878. And after that, they the state hired a private company, mm -hmm. and people will say, well, why don't they have those films? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes it is because of whoever owns the records, what they will allow, what restrictions they will put on them is the answer to why we don't have everything on one, one website. But you know, That's absolutely that, true. This is just you know, really a fantastic project that you've gotten involved in, Carol. Thank you. Glad to hear that you're going back to Oh, Greece. I'm going. I'm going to keep going as long <laughs> as I can keep walking. <laughs> and we want to thank you for, for coming in and sharing this with us because I think this will open the eyes to some of our audience to, there's a possibility that I can do this. Yeah, I absolutely. Can, yeah. can help to preserve these records and especially in areas where they are kind of underserved. There, right. There's not a whole lot of effort to get those records copied. And they're so important to have. Absolutely. Thank you, Carol. Thank you this so much. This is very fascinating. Yes. Thank you. So, so we'll just talk until the credits go all the way. This is we are. We are all. <laughs> so, yeah. But I think that's a good question to ask. Uh, why all of them are to and, you know, Family Search goes all over the world. Yes, they do. It's kind of interesting that somehow they weren't able to pick up some of the collections. Well, and I mean, um, that, that was the well, thing when.